our next speaker believes it's all about the private networks, and we're going to find out why soon enough. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, real-life LoRa 1 and transforming communities and industries using that. She came in all the way from uh, Australia. Uh, she is the founder of Meshed. Please give it up for the amazing Catherine Caruana McManus. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. And you said my name so beautifully. Listen, it's so fantastic to be here. Um, I am an executive director of Meshed, and we've been working with the Things Network and the Things Industry since 2015. Um, over the course of our seven-year journey with LoRaWAN, we have deployed many use cases, from POCs to very large network deployments. And uh, essentially, what I'm going to do today is share with you some of our great success stories. But many of you may be aware of my work in smart cities. Prior to establishing Meshed, I was the head of Smarter Cities for IBM. But today, I'm taking a bit of a different tack. I'm going to share with you impactful use cases in the industrial and commercial sector. But before I do that, um, I'm just going to put into perspective where Australia fits in terms of our adoption of IoT versus the rest of the world. Now, whilst IDC has predicted that by 2026, the spend in IoT in Australia will be around about 24 million, the reality is that we are lagging behind the rest of the world in our leveraging of um, digital transformation. But we are making significant headroads in the industries of manufacturing, uh, construction, infrastructure, transport logistics, and agriculture. Now, that makes sense because they are our strength industries. We're actually not a large manufacturing organization, and we don't have an IT sector, so to speak. So if you think about this conference and a lot of the discussion over the years, everybody's been asking the question, when will IoT scale? And that's a really good question. Telcos rely on scale for their business model. But customers actually want business impact. And in our experience, over many years in this LoRaWAN IoT journey, it's not about how many sensors are deployed. It's about how digital transformation can help an organization with its productivity, its customer experience, and its ability to deliver its services in a much more safe and sustainable way. Now, let me give you my first example. Some of you may recognize what I have on the screen here. It's a mining dump truck. This truck can cost up to $6.5 million. The tires in the truck are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you can see the sense in a mining company using wall-mounted tire sensors, monitoring temperature and pressure, so that they can understand the real-time performance, the predictive capability of end of life of that asset. Because the reality is, if one of these tires goes down, whether it's autonomous or not, that's catastrophic failure on a mine site. And what LoRaWAN does is it enables that connectivity in places hard to get connectivity. And trust me, a lot of the mining companies that we've worked with, they've spent millions in deploying cellular and satellite technology across their mine site, but they are still finding places where they're not getting connectivity. So a really fantastic example of impact of LoRaWAN um, for outcome. Sydney Water is Australia's largest water authority. It's responsible for over 22,600 kilometres of pipe. Um, we've been working with Sydney Water for a couple of years. They've actually deployed a LoRaWAN network, um, but they're actually not using their LoRaWAN network for digital water metering. That's a bit of a surprise because everybody's talking about digital water metering. They're actually using their LoRaWAN network for environmental and uh, environmental monitoring. Use cases like water quality and waterways, flood mitigation, and um, smart irrigation. But this case study is about their brilliant work 
in using acoustic sensors, which they developed in partnership with the University of Technology, Sydney, which is actually able to detect the difference in sound of water rushing through a leak. So what they did is over a two-year period, they installed 600 sensors in only 13 kilometers of their network and discovered that they actually saved over 9,000 megalitres of water, which equated to around about $20 million. But the business impact is around customer experience, because everybody knows the discomfort that happens when we have water pipe bursts. And in Sydney, Australia, that is a major issue for us because we have very congested networks. And many of you may not be aware, but trucks are the biggest problem for water leakage because the constant stopping and starting on a road actually causes vibration, which weakens the, the pipe network. Let's shift now to the steel industry. Uh, one of our customers is a very innovative global steel manufacturing company. Uh, over the last couple of years, they've invested, they've done a huge investment in communications technology and in intelligent asset management systems. Um, their journey with LoRaWAN started a couple of years ago where they wanted to fill the gap across their campus. They call their facilities campuses. These campuses often include a port facility because they're bringing in raw materials and they're also doing manufacturing on site. Um, so what they saw the benefit of LoRaWAN was that it could complement their Wi-Fi their CAT M1, their LTE network, and get into those really hard to get to places where they could put a low cost sensor, battery operated, and get the data that they need. They've got some terrific use cases, and we've been helping them with all of the sensors. And just to explain what MESHED does, we're a systems integrator, but we provide managed network end to end to the customer. So we pre configure the sensors. They're dispatched to the customer. They put them on site. The great thing about these use cases is my point is that it's not about the number of sensors. It's about small quantities of sensors across a wide range of use cases, which together inform them about their predictive state. And for a mining, for a steel manufacturing organization, that's mission critical because they can't afford any loss in production because that will cost them millions of dollars. The data is also being ingested into the OSI Pi platform, but it can also be ingested into other platforms. Seaports and logistics. We're on an island, so we have a lot of ports. And it's great the work that we've been doing with one of the major ports based in Western Australia. They're responsible for three strategic port facilities. Um, Yo, Johan Snyman, who's the head of asset management, is passionate about digitizing every asset across the port facility. In his mind, he's using IoT as the benchmark to drive standards into asset maintenance and electronic SCADA controls. There's a great use case here. Um, this one that I'm showing you is corrosion monitoring using LoRaWAN and other um, technologies to sense the state of the pylons on the wharfs. Um, this is a very important use case because of the high stress and load these wharfs receive, as well as the fact it's in a very volatile coastal um, environment. I love this term of phrase, low cost multi-purpose IoT, which is how Johan described his partnership with MESHT uh, at a major asset management conference a couple of months ago. These are some of the use cases, uh, quite similar in some respects to the mining, um, sorry, to the steel manufacturing use case I provided earlier. They have a lot of rail coming into the ports, collecting raw materials such as gold, iron ore, as well as they are a major grain delivery port. Um, so a lot of the grain that's grown in WA comes out of their ports. And so the rail track heat and stress monitoring is a really important use case. But what's really cool is um, if you meet the team that works with Johan, they're a great fun team. And they created a simple robot on a flotation device uh, that goes out around the port and takes pictures as well as assists with installation for their IoT sensors. 
to get to those really hard to get places. So I love that it's kind of DIY IoT. We think about mining and resources. Um, this is a really interesting story. It's a private managed network uh, running uh, in the north part of uh, WA in the Pilbara. It's actually enabling out of harbour visibility. So um, we, you have these in, in Europe, but in Australia, because of the tidal flow, the, um, the harbours are often out of harbour. They could be 20 to 30 kilometres offshore. Now, this is mission critical because every watercraft and ship that goes in and out must be tracked and timed in terms of delivery to the next port. So what LoRaWAN with GPS tracking has enabled them to do is to get that long-range visibility using a terrestrial-based gateway out to the outer harbour. What's also really important, too, is that this area is in a cyclone zone. So it's not unusual for cyclones to pass through this region. So again, having that visibility on the status and state of the asset is, is a mission-critical application for themselves. It's been absolutely fantastic attending the conference the last couple of days, um, particularly seeing some of the great stories around what's happening in the construction uh, industry. Uh, in Australia, we've had a construction boom over the last couple of years. The state governments are investing heavily into uh, new infrastructure. This is a really great example, the Level Crossing Rail um, Project, uh, which is removing over 70 uh, rail crossings across metropolitan Melbourne. So McConnell Dow, one of the largest construction companies in Australia, um, pulled together a consortia led by Orange Business Services to create a connected site. And the purpose of the connected site was to embed IoT to um, test the outcomes around productivity, cost efficiency, and also safety and compliance. The coolest um, use case, I mean, obviously, we're looking at air quality sensing. We use the meshed pedestrian counters to actually understand the impacts of pedestrian and cycle flow to the station while the construction was occurring. But they actually put one GPS tracker on the crane jib. And what that did is that timed uh, the time it took uh, to actually place a concrete pad in situ and the number of movements. They then built that into an algorithm which determined within about a 95% accuracy when that project would be completed. So my point today is about it's not about scale, it's about is business impact. With one GPS tracker, the construction company can understand its predictive time on that project. Um, as you probably have heard and, and seen, um, I know that Europe uh, went into lockdown, but Australia, we took it really seriously. We were pretty much locked away from the world for about two years. And even when we were living in Australia, we weren't allowed to travel between states. This had a massive multi-billion dollar deficit effect in the university sector uh, because they rely on international students for their revenue. We've been working with the University of Melbourne for many years. They've deployed both public and private um, access uh, LoRaWAN networks across all their campuses. Um, but the facilities maintenance division for a while was struggling to understand what could be the mission critical use case to justify a private network uh, at the university. Well, COVID was the answer. They were desperate to actually get students to return uh, so that they could actually meet uh, the deficit in revenue. And so what they did is they implemented over 1,700 CO2 sensors linked to their Campus Now Intelligent Facilities Management platform. And they used um, CO2 levels as a proxy to determine essentially whether there was um, virus, um, uh, you know, virus uh, presence, uh, as well as looking at then linking that to ventilation and whether or not they needed to go and manually put out air purifiers. So um, I like this one at the end because this is more community focused, uh, but hopefully in short summary, um, you know, the, the reality is scale is important, uh, but actually the results to the organisation for return on investment is critically important. Um, and, you know, because IoT is not seamless, 
you have devices, you have network, you have application, you've got to be able to bring that together uh, in a way that helps the customer get the data quickly and they can realize the benefits. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Do I get thank you. Right. Thanks. That was, uh, that was really great, Catherine. Um, we are going to take a short break here. If you haven't already had lunch, uh, feel free to head over. Uh, lunch is already opened. Uh, you can get your token. Uh,